Hi there and welcome to today's video on zero copy cloning in Snowflake. My name is Marius and I'm a trainee consulting analyst at the Information Lab. Today I'll introduce you to the concept of zero copy cloning in Snowflake, showcase its abilities and discuss why you should be using it. First of all, for those who don't know, Snowflake is fully cloud based software that combines data warehousing, engineering, processing, and other data-related analytical solutions. It was also one of the first database providers to implement the concept of zero-copy cloning within a database. But what is it? Well, imagine somebody at work asks you for a copy of the table and give you a folder where this copy should be copied to. However, what you don't want to do is store the same data twice. You still want to share the access to the data or create some so, somewhat of a pointer, but you don't want the data to be duplicated. Well, this is what zero copy cloning does. It allows us to give access to the data without copying it physically. However, zero copy cloning is not a new concept. It has its roots in an older data sharing method called the copy on write. The idea of this method is simple. If you're copying but not modifying the physical structure of the data, this copy should only act as a reference, meaning it would reference the data that sits within the original table without creating a duplicate and storing the same data twice. Similar to the copy on write, zero copy cloning in Snowflake allows us to clone tables, databases, or schemas without creating another copy of the underlying data, which in turn helps us to save space. This is possible because objects within the Snowflake only stores the metadata and not the actual data. The data is stored on a different storage layer, as we can see from the picture below. So our source table and clone table sits under the metadata layer, while our data sits under the data or storage layer. However, what if the person who asks for a copy of the table also wants you to add a column? Well, a zero copy cloning comes in handy here as well. In Snowflake, clone tables will only hold the data that's not available in the original table. In this instance, it would only store that additional column while the rest would still be referenced from the source data. This is achieved because of the micropartition structure Snowflake runs on. To optimize the performance, Snowflake breaks large amounts of data into smaller chunks, called the micropartitions which usually contain between 50 megabytes to 500 megabytes of uncompressed data. This allows Snowflake to run queries only on the affected chunks of data without the need to run the query on the whole data set. This in turn saves both time and money. In zero copy cloning, it means that when the table is cloned, it references the micro partitions of the source table and after a change is implemented, it creates a new micropartition for the affected data chunk that relates solely to the clone. This is also represented in the image below. We can see that our source table refers to all three source micropartitions, while clone table does not reference the micropartition number three, and instead it references micropartition number four, which is unique to the clone table. If tracing it back to the previous example, micropartition number four is the additional column. It's worth noting that clones can be copied an indefinite number of times and can also be used together with time travel to take a snapshot of the original table at a specific point in time. It is also important to know that after the clone is produced, the source table and the clone table act as separate tables, meaning one can be written to without affecting the other. So if you add a column to a clone table after cloning, this won't be reflected in the source table and vice versa. 
But why should you be using zero copy cloning in Snowflake? Well, first, it helps to avoid data duplication and save storage, which in turn saves on storage costs. It is also useful when creating backups that won't cost you any money until a change is implemented or spinning off a test environment. And lastly, as we will see later in the video, this method of cloning tables in Snowflake is relatively simple to use. So you can save a significant amount of storage with little to no effort. Nevertheless, there are certain requirements if you wish to use this feature of Snowflake. First of all, you must have permissions to use the select query on tables. You also need to have full ownership over pipe work, steam work, and task work for the objects you're cloning. And you will need the usage permissions to, uh, for other objects as well as your role to have required privileges on source and clone container objects if you're cloning a schema or an object in a schema. In terms of what you can clone, you can clone databases, schemas, tables, streams, and certain data configuration objects like stages or sequences. However, for this demo, we will focus on data storage objects with the obvious one being tables. As we can see, the syntax is very simple. In Snowflake, to create a table, we use a create table command followed by the name of the table. To clone a table, we will need to add the clone command after the table name and also specify the name of the original table. And that is it. When cloning different data storage objects, the syntax might slightly differ, but the initial structure stays the same. It's create command for the object we're cloning, give it a name, then clone command, and the name of the original object. So without further ado, let's jump on Snowflake and test this. So what are we going to do today? First, we'll try to create an identical clone of one of our tables. Then, for the second example, we will create another clone, but this time we will also modify it by adding additional rows to see how does this affect the data storage. And after that, we will also use clone command together with time travel to return uh, that table before adding new rows. As you can already see, I have my Snowflake instance opened and I also have certain SQL queries pre-written to make it easier. So first of all, uh, the table we will be using today or the table we will try to clone, so our source table, is this table called test table MR. And this table uh, basically has around 100 rows and holds around 9 uh, kilobytes of data. So to create the first clone, I have this statement written. So we can see we have create table. Then we have the fully qualified name for uh, the new clone we're going to make. And then we also have the clone command and uh, the, uh, the name of the source table. So if I run this query, this should clone the data. And as we can see in the bottom results pane, it says, it says table clone one successfully created. However, as we can see, we can't find this table under the different tables on the left. To do that, uh, what we need to do is first refresh our data. So if I hit a refresh button, now, if I scroll down, we should be able to see it. And as we can see, yeah, so we have clone one over here. Again, it's 100 rows and 9 kilobytes of data. However, this does not mean that this table actually contains data. We will later run another query to check how much data does this clone actually take. So we successfully created the first clone. Now, uh, let's create the second one. So the second one is, again, very simple to the first clone. The only difference is that I named this clone differently. So we're going to name it clone2. And we will use this table to modify it later. 
So let's run our query. So I hit the run button. And again, in the results pane, we can see that table clone two was successfully created. Uh, let's refresh our data again to see the table under our uh, schema. And here we have clone a number two. Now, as we previously discussed, we want to modify this table. And to do that, I have the sec, uh, deferred SQL statement over here. And this is uh, an insert query. We're basically saying Snowflake to insert data into clone two. And the data we're inserting is test table MR. So we're basically inserting the data from our original table just to get more data within the table. So if I run this query, as we can see in the results pane in the bottom, over here it says the number of rows inserted equals 100. So basically we inserted 100 rows into clone 2. And if we refresh our data, we can also check it under here. Uh, now what we can see, clone 2 has 200 rows instead of 100 and a slightly higher storage. So now what we want to do is uh, we want to use time travel to clone the same table. So we want to clone the clone number 2 but uh, we want to go back in time and clone the table that did not have those additional rows. So instead of a table with 200 rows, we want to clone a table with 100 rows. And for that, we're gonna use time travel. It is a good time to mention that when working with time travel or account usage queries, a query we will be using later uh, in this example, uh, there could be a slight delay between what happens here in the front end in the uh, user interface and what happens back in the system. So because of that, it's always good to give one to two hours according to Snowflake documentation for these changes to be reflected within the system. So I gave it a few hours just to make sure. And now we can carry on with our example. So. The next thing we will be doing is we will try to take the clone 2, so the table clone 2 that currently has 200 rows, and we will try to clone it, but clone it in the past when it didn't have 200 rows. It only had 100 rows. So to do that, we will be using a time travel command. So this would be my uh, almost last SQL statement. And we're basically saying to create a new clone based on the clone 2 before a specific period in time. So now if I run this query, in the results pane we can see that it says clone 3 and are successfully created. And then if we refresh our tables and navigate to clone 3, we can see that it has 100 rows. So uh, for comparison, clone 2 still has 200 rows and clone 3 is the same clone of clone 2 but in, in a different period of time when it had only 100 rows. So we can see that the time travel command worked successfully. So uh, that would be it for uh, the examples in terms of creating different tables. But uh, another interesting thing to have a look at is the storage. To have a look at the storage, we'll be using another query, which I already pre-written. So it would be this query. And here we are basically referring to a table storage metrics table under account usage schema under Snowflake. And here basically we'll be able to see how much storage each of our table actually takes. I also introduced some filtering just to make this a little bit simpler and for this query to return less results so uh, we could find what we need much quicker. So if I just run this query, it could take a little bit of time, but as we can see, our results pane been populated. 
so I'll just expand it a little bit and also what I'm gonna do I'll sort it by the latest creation date and over here the tables uh, we care about is test table MR, clone 1 and clone 2 and also if we look at the so the table IDs as we can see slightly differ but if we look at the clone group we can see that all these tables are under the same clone group meaning they are clones so test table not necessarily is a clone this is the source table uh, but this one belongs under the same clone group and uh, just to show in real life what we spoke about today in terms of storage let's just look at this active byte column over here so we can see that our test table MR holds 9 kilobytes of data which is true because if you go over over here we can also see that it's 9 kilobytes of data just as reflected on our user interface but an interesting thing is that our clone 1 does not store any data so it, there is 0 kilobytes meaning that it references all of the data from the original source and then clone 2 the table we clone but then inserted additional 100 rows uh, stores some data by itself and basically it uh, supports the concept of clones within snowflake only referencing the only storing the data that is not available within the original source so in this case it stores the 100 uh, additional rows while the first 100 rows are from the source table and also you probably could uh, see that there's no clone free uh, even though we created it but again as i previously mentioned because of slight delay in the system it does not display it straight away but it was more of an example to show how to use time travel so uh, we not necessarily need to see the active bytes metrics for that table but again it shows that zero copy cloning does save uh, uh, a lot on uh, a lot of storage and allows us to optimize our storage this way helping us to save costs thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful and now feel more confident in using zero copy cloning in snowflake if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and i suggest you check out a related video by my fellow data schooler click on the thumbnail on the bottom right to watch it next also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified once we release new videos. Thank you and see you again soon.